So let's begin. Inna alhamdulillah, certainly, without a doubt, all praise, thanks, and gratitude belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nahmaduhu, for that reason, we praise him. And we ask for help, assistance, and all matters of life. And we ask for forgiveness when we fall short. And we put our trust, unconditional trust in him. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi. Full trust. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. Wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa nashhadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluh. Allah says in his book, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا believers all of you addressing all of you اتقوا الله have awareness of Allah have consciousness of Allah have your Allah's presence all the time with all the conducts that you carry حق تقاته the way he deserves it فلا تموتن don't you dare. See, فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ If you read the Arabic syntax, it's, it's incredible. It's not, it's, it is not light. It's very, very heavy with tons of emphasis in it. Don't you dare. What I just said, that you forgot, that you are dying, leaving this world, and you forgot to be in a full state of submission. That's Allah's command for you. You know, often in, in Quran, there, there are areas we can reflect. One of the questions comes up from a community all the time or for ourselves all the time is dua, supplication. What do I make dua? And in which circumstance can I make which dua? We ask this all the time, right? There are numerous dua books, you know that. And there are numerous duas in the hadith as well. But I found an incredible source that I'm gonna, I'm happy to say it to you all, and there are embedded lessons in this. There are du'as in the Quran. There are some awesome du'as in the Quran. And why do I love those? Here's why I love it. Because Allah, your creator, my creator, he is teaching the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, you say this du'a, which all of them starts with what? Qul, say in certain circumstance. So here's, a, here's one such dua for today, inshallah, and that will be the topic of our discussions for the next few minutes. Quite a few lessons, I'm going to point one or two, and you can extract, ex extrapolate out of that multiple other lessons yourselves. I'll give you the address, maybe perhaps you go and read it yourself, and have a discussion tonight with the family around dinner table. What an awesome activity to do so. So the address is this, Surah Al-Asra, Surah 17, Ayah uh, number 80, that's where I'm focused today. My focus is that. And what is that? وَقُلْ رَبِّي أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدِقٍ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدِقٍ وَجْعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانًا نَصِيرًا That is the law. Allah says, قُلْ Say, O Prophet of God, the context behind it. And put this situation, I'm going to give you the historical context really briefly, next few seconds and you put yourself in that situation. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the Isra and Mi'raj, the ascension, the ascension, went to the heavens, and after meeting all those incredible people there and talking to Allah directly, came back on earth and people were making fun of him, right? You know the history, you know the seerah. Everyone was making fun of him, specifically the non-believers, and that was, that gave him even additional weapon to make fun even further to the point that they wanted to assassinate him, to wanted to take his life. And they planned all of that. Well, he needed some avenue. And this is what Allah said, say this word, say these words to him. Which means put yourself in a situation, any kind of tough situation that you are, whatever that might be, financial situation, situations, uh, challenges with the kids, challenges with the family, challenges with, the f with, with friends, challenges with your cousin. Challenges with any, you know, marital challenges, whatever challenge that you, that you are in, memorize this dua and make this dua. 
And there is a, I'm going to point one incredible element of this. What is Allah saying? Say, Rabbi, oh my master, oh ya Allah, oh my Lord, however you want to translate this. Adkhilni mudkhala sidqin. You know what dakhala is, right? To enter, entrance. So pay attention to this one. He is, uh, Allah is teaching him saying, enter me, enter me in a really nice, awesome sound entrance. And akhrijni, kharaja means to leave and extract me from a really sound exit. What does that really mean? So put your thought, yourself in a situation, as I said. If you're in a condition that you're challenged, you want to exit, exit the challenge first, then and find an avenue, find an area to put yourself in a better situation. Exiting is first, entrance is second. Allah flipped it here. Why? What, what, am I, what do I mean by flipping? Adkhalni, adkhal, to dakhala is to enter. So he's giving you in, in a really, really important lesson. And here's the lesson. Always be positive in anything that comes to, to you. Anything is tossed at you. Be positive. Look in a positive outlook. This is what Allah is saying here. Adkhilni, enter me. I know in the historical perspective, I know these, these non-believers, these enemies are trying to do everything to sabotage my mission and trying to get rid of me. That is tough. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe your uh, promotion wasn't the way you were expecting. Maybe you're having a tough time with the kids. Whatever that might be. Don't think in a negative perspective. Put yourself in a positive situation first, Allah says. What does that mean? That means Allah saying, put yourself in a way that you will be with the truth. Sadaq means also truth. Put yourself with the truth. Commit yourself with the truth. Even though whatever situation that you have seen that is not looking good, think something positive will come out of that. Well, it's easy for us to say. How are you going to do this? That's the second part of this lesson. How are you going to do this? The second part of the lesson says, you may not have that capability, but you rely, remember, remember when I started the khutbah saying, put your full unconditional trust on Allah? This is what Allah says here. Put your, your trust in Allah and ask for help. What kind of help? The kind of help that there's no one else is capable of giving you. Milladunka from you, specifically from you, especially from you, from the areas that is impossible and imaginable for any human being or anyone to think about. Give me help from there. You're asking Allah for help. You're asking Allah for help. You're taking steps towards it. And just prior to this ayah, if you look at this was number 1780, in, uh, in uh, 78 and uh, 79, I'm gonna mention something else. There's another recipe for you. What is it you should do in this situation? You have heard this all, all of this before. I'm not trying to give you a new concept. The purpose of khutbah is you sit here for a few minutes with someone who's sitting in here, standing here, to give you something to take with you. That's, that's what the purpose is, and uh, this is a reminder. Allah says, You have heard this ayah before. Inna Qur'an al-Fajr kana mashhuda. That's the first. That's the first lesson. When you face a tough situation, what is Allah recommending to you? Stand in prayer. Allah is telling you, stand in prayer, pray. And Allah mentions, what is this pray? Pray. He mentions a, a couple of type of prayers from the sunset and the, until the darkness of the night, and then wa Qur'an al-Fajr. How many of you, how many of us are laxative? When the Fajr time comes, we're not quite with it. Allah is telling you, Quran al-Fajr, the prayer of the Fajr is incredibly important to communicate with him, with your creator, to ask your creator. Quran al-Fajr is mentioned. Time of Fajr. You know what Fajr is, Fajr prayer. That's what Allah is saying. On top of it, Allah says, here's another avenue for you to help yourself. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَحَجَّدْ بِهِ you know tahajjud, you know that word, you've heard that before. Allah says, on top of it, on top of that, carve some time for yourself. Carve some time for yourself to do a tahajjud. To another way, talk to your God, talk to your master. 
Well, there's a few elements. You gotta know what you're saying when the time of prayer comes, right? You have to know what you're saying. The best communication with Allah, when you're in a tough situation, stand in prayer. And Allah's giving you the, the recipe here. I was listening to, um, um, from uh, my daughter's uh, uh, class, the online, some sort of uh, uh, class was there last night. And something really was intriguing to me. I was like, wow. I've, we have said this over and over again, Quran is the revelation, Quran is the light, Quran is this, Quran is that. But what that guy said to the kids was like, have you guys seen a flashlight in a dark night? What is the purpose of flashlight? I'm like, wow, it is incredible. Flashlight, you turn it on and you, go, you try to find a path. And he's like, guides you. This is what the purpose of Quran is. In Surah Al-Hadid, Allah says, Different topic, different day, but this is my favorite saying of Imam Tahir. He's like, different topic, different day. And it's true, this is a different topic and different day. Uh, Allah says in Surah Al-Hadid, on the last day, humanity will come, believers will come, and each one will have different light coming out of their, out of their chest. Some will be flickering, just seeing a couple of steps in front. Some will be a little bit further, a couple of feet. Some will be a couple of yards, a couple, couple of hundred feet. Some of them will be like a sunlight, it's just illuminates the path. Why? Because these people in, in, incorporated this, these lessons, these lessons, they never, ever, ever wavered from the, tr the truth, from the path. This is what Allah is saying. Regardless of what circumstances hit you, do not waver from the truth, from the path. That's the lesson. Quran al-Fajr, fatahajjad bihi. Allah mentions Quran, Quran, Quran. And if you, I'm going to give you the other homework, ayah number 81. This is not part of this. Look at that it completely ties the entire lesson, which is phenomenal. You heard this before multiple times. I'm not going to give you the translation. I'm going to just read it to you. You go and read it yourself and think about it. How many times have you heard that in a context of uh, an Asir and all that? But here's the context behind it. إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah says in his book, and this is something that you all should do, especially on Fridays. Especially has been said. There's a narration between Asr and and uh, and uh, Maghrib. And what am I talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي. Certainly Allah. Certainly Allah. Think about this. Just think about this. This is another khutbah on its own. Allah and all the angelic forms. I don't know how many angels are there. Everyone, they do one thing. Yusalluna, at the present form of a verb. Yusallun means continuously, on a continuous basis, not one off. What are they doing on a continuous basis? They send salutations, salam and blessings out upon our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, all of you believers, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Innaka hamidun majid Let's pray Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina wa akhtaqna ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعف عنا واغفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين أنا will leave you with this last advice from the Quran as you hear every خطبة will conclude with this advice and what is that advice um, I've said this enough times, lifting my fingers and all that stuff. Hey, let's do this again. Uh, let's do this again. Three things Allah says you do, and three things you do not do under no circumstance. Do, don't. Do, don't. What are the do's?